want to thank all of you that's here this morning uh, for being here. I want to thank you for, uh, I want to thank the church for last Sunday. Uh, we filled in for a friend of ours down at Mount Sinai in, uh, in Portland last Sunday uh, for Brother Denny McClendon. Uh, he and his wife, they decided they'd take some time off. And those of you that don't know him, his wife has been battling cancer for quite a while. And, uh, has had a very rough time, and finally the doctor gave me some good news. He called me and said, Brother Larry, said we're going to take a few days off. Said uh, just the the pressure, of what we've been going through. He said we're going to take a few days off. He said, Would you come and preach for us? We did, but we missed you, people. Missed you very much, and uh, uh, we're good. To be, it's good to be here with you this morning. Uh, I, just be truthful with you. I'd rather for Brother Roger to be standing here this morning. Pray for him as he is uh, still sick this morning. Continue to pray for him and for the for him in the upcoming days. And, and the Lord knows what he stands in need of. But I want to say it's, it's good to be here today. I want to thank the Lord for the opportunity to stand behind this pulpit in Brother Roger's place. Now, if you come to hear something miraculous, uh, you've come to the wrong place. I, I just, I'm just like Paul. I'm going to preach the gospel. Uh, there's nothing, uh, uh, according to the world, there's nothing fantastic about the gospel. But thank God that it's not up to the world as to what the gospel is this morning. So uh, thank you for being here. Thank our visitors for coming and being with us. If you're uh, lost today, you are a special guest in God's house. And we pray that before this day is over that you will come to know Jesus as your Savior and have your name <clears throat> written in the Lamb Book of Life. Be in prayer for us today. Our cough is trying to come back. We were plagued with a cough last weekend and it seemed like the devil is trying to lower us down this morning. Say, yeah, you're going to start coughing you're not going to be able to finish it. Well, I can report to you, don't worry, Jesus has already finished it. Jesus is the one that has gained the victory over death, hell, and the grave. And by him, we can have that same victory today in Christ Jesus. So if I'm not able to finish in any way because of my voice, don't worry. Jesus has already finished it. And just rely on him by faith in Jesus this morning. But in the third chapter of the book of Romans this morning, we want to read some very familiar scripture. Then we want to go over into the 8th chapter and read some scripture. But if you will turn to the 3rd chapter of the book of Romans, chapter, uh, verse number 19. And when you find it, if you will, to stand. And I want to thank you for standing for the reading of God's word uh, when you're able to. If you're not able to, that's okay. But I want to thank you for standing for the reading of God's Word. Now in verse number 19 of chapter number 3, it says, Now we know that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped, and all the world might become guilty before God. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely, by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Now we'll just go over to chapter number 8 real quick. You, you, you may not uh, want to turn over there, but that's fine. And verse number 1 says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Lord, we thank you this morning for your wonderful grace. We want to thank you this morning. For your justification that you have given us through Jesus Christ, our Lord, this morning. Now, I pray that you would help our voice. But most of all, I pray that you would bless the reading of your word. That your word may go out and would fulfill that which it is purposed to fulfill this morning. Bless now this congregation 
And Lord, we ask that if there's one here that is walking afar off or walking out in, in darkness, we pray that today they will come to know the light, which is Jesus Christ. And for it's in his name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> and I'm going to do something this morning that I forgot to do last night. I didn't ask to take off my jacket. I think that was one of the things that hurt me last Sunday. Uh, the building we were in was very warm, and I will tell you right now, I know what my brother Roger means when he stands up here and he says, boy, it's warm. Don't worry about the heat this morning. I'll just take off my jacket, and, and that will help me out. But I want us to look for just a little while at the word justification. I, I, I have run into a lot of people over my time that they, for some reason, uh, Brother Ron, they just don't understand what the word justification really means. I have run into people that they say that they will come up to me, and, and I'll just put it to you like this. I believe in eternal salvation this morning. I believe that what God does, He does forever. He doesn't halfway do it. He doesn't leave it up to us. He does it all this morning, Brother Larry. And I don't think that there's anything that you and I can do other than believing in Jesus Christ that can do anything for our salvation. Uh, God's already done it all. He's already taken care of it. And all he asks for us to do is just by faith believe in Jesus Christ this morning. That's what the scripture says today. Uh, well, the Bible tells us there in the third chapter of the book of Romans that uh, verse number 23, I have memorized this and I wanted every Sunday school class that I ever taught, I wanted them to memorize, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Now, I want you to understand this morning, I have had people come up to me and say, Brother Larry, I have lived a perfect life. I have went for so many years and I have never sinned. I, I have went for so many years and I have not even had so much as an evil thought in my mind. Brother Gerald, I don't agree with that this morning uh, because the Bible says that as long as I'm in this world, I'm going to have trouble with the flesh today. And I want to say to you, you're going to have trouble in the flesh. <laughs> in that chapter number 8 that we just read, we didn't go on over and read the other scripture, but in verse number 7, it talks about the carnal mind. It said the carnal mind is enmity against God. That means that it is opposed to everything that God stands for this morning. It says it's enmity with God. It cannot be subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So, Brother Gerald, as long as I'm in this world, as long as I'm in this body, my greatest enemy that I have is the one that I shave and wash the face of every day. I have problems with my flesh. Why my flesh wants to reach out and to grab things that it shouldn't reach out and grab. It wants to go and do things that it don't really need to get involved in today. And so I am having a problem with my flesh today, but thanks be unto God, uh, he's already taken care of all the workings of salvation for me. Amen. All he says is, Larry, I want you. Y'all be, y'all got bear with me. <clears throat> Jesus said, Larry, this is what I want you to do. I want you to deny yourself and follow me. Now, I want to say this today. There are so many people out there that, number one, they're saying, I'm following Jesus, but they're denying God and not themselves. Jesus said, deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow me. Now, there's a lot of people that are trying to follow Christ, but one thing they're not doing is they're not denying themselves. And I'll give you a good example for that. And there's scripture to back this up. But what I'm fixing to say, I've had people come up to me and say, well, now, Brother Larry, I'm saved. I'm saved to do anything I want to do. I asked this person to qualify their statement. And this is what they said. And it, and it goes on. I don't know how many of y'all saw the, the lady that got, well, I'm, I'm not going to say lady because I don't believe the lady would do this. But this woman that got married and she walked in the church with her newborn baby on the train of her wedding. And 
this is what she said when some people complained. She said, I am a Christian. I can do what I want, when I want, how I want. Lady, you're wrong. You're wrong, woman. I'm a Christian this morning. I can't do what I want, when I want, how I want. Why the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter number 6, it says that I bought with a price. I don't belong to myself anymore. Jesus owns me today. He's my commanding officer. He's my commanding general. And he's the one I have to follow. Amen. When I was in the Marine Corps, and I know any of you that's ever been in the service, you know what I'm fixing to say. One of the things, first things we had to learn was our 11 general orders. These were orders that if we failed to comply with, we would go to the brig. Or in other words, for you people, go to jail. One of them was to obey all orders given by those that are superior to ourselves. Jesus is my supreme commander this morning. There is none no greater. And I want to tell you something. There's none below him. He is standing there alone and he says, Larry, I want you to deny yourself and follow me. Jesus let me know that I no longer belong to myself. Because he let me know that if I'm left to myself, that I will just bring nothing but destruction upon myself. Jesus said, Larry, I want you to deny yourself, and I want you to follow me. I want you to keep your eyes on me. I want you to do what I tell you. And Brother Gerald, I have been doing that all my life, but I still have a problem with the flesh. This is one thing that I like. The Bible tells me to sanctify myself. Now, to these people that think that, oh, well, now sanctification means that you just get up so holy and everything, nobody can stand to be around you. No, it's like this right here. Now, I'll just put, now, man, now, some of y'all, now, don't come up to me and, and try to crucify me after I say this. I have my wife with house. Don't condemn me about it. But I help my wife with housework. I wash dishes. I'll sweep the floors. I, I'll not go any further than that. But I wash dishes. Now I'm going to tell you something. The dishes that I've washed have been washed time and time again. We're not one of these that when we use a plate, we take it over to the garbage can, open up the garbage can, throw the plate in. No, we put it in the sink. We wash it and we put it up to be used again. Sanctification is that very same thing, is that we keep ourselves clean to where we can be used by the Master. Amen. Now, no flesh will be justified. Now, I want us to look at the word justification. People think that just being justified makes you holy inwardly. No, it doesn't. There's only one that makes us holy inwardly, and his name is Jesus Christ. Amen. Justification does not make us holy. Now, to get you familiar with it, I guess everybody has ever has heard of the word justifiable homicide. Now, we all know we're not supposed to kill anybody. But I know that we've all heard that word used on the news when someone would kill somebody and they would say that according to the DA or according to the grand jury, it was justifiable homicide. What do you mean? There is no guilt to be applied to the person that committed this. Justification is as I stand before God, God looks at me and because of what Jesus did and that I accepted what Jesus did, when I stand before God, I stand before him justified just as though I had never sinned, but it was because of what Christ did on Calvary, not what Larry Gunner done on his knees. Amen. <coughs> I didn't know I was going to do all this. I thought I was just going to stand up here and read a few things, and I was going to be done. Justification does not make us holy. 
declares that the demand of justice has been satisfied. Well, I've had people tell me, oh, Brother Mary, because of my good deeds, when I stand before God on the day of judgment, I'm not going to have to worry about Him condemning me. I said, well, now, I don't know about you, but I said, according to my Bible, I'm not going to stand before God. I'm going to stand before Jesus Christ at the judgment seat of Christ. If you want to do some studying on the judgment seat of Christ, the judgment seat of Christ is not one of condemnation, but one of rendering rewards to those that love Jesus. Now, I'm going to tell you something. I'm here this morning. I want to say this. I'm here in New Macedonia this morning because I love the people that's here. I really love the people that's here. My wife loves the people that's here. Amen. But I want to tell you something. That that's not the only reason. And if it was the only reason that I come here, I wouldn't come here. I wouldn't be worth coming here. But the reason I come here is because the Savior that is worshipped by this congregation and that is Jesus Christ. Amen. Therefore, the one that you worship is the one I worship, and we have a common bond because we lift Jesus up. And I will say this. If you didn't lift Jesus up, I wouldn't be here. I don't care how good you are. I don't care how kind you are to one another. If it had not been that pure spirit of God that was dwelling in this building because of your heart before God, we wouldn't have even thought about coming. Brother Larry, it's because of that common bond that we have. Did I look over Brother Larry? Now, I'll use him a lot. Now, it's easy because we've got the same name. It's easy for me to pronounce his name because I've said it for so long. My name's Larry, and I know I'm going to get his name right. I can look over at Brother Larry. Everybody's sitting there with his head kind of tilted up, with his eyes closed. I wonder what he's thinking about. Well, I can do the same thing, and if I focus on the right thing, I can say, well, I know what he's looking at. He's trying to look into heaven. Amen. He's trying to look up into heaven to see Jesus sitting at the right hand of the Father. He's trying to look in to the very throne of God and see the very appearance of Christ. And I said, that's something that I can do with you. But being justified, I don't justify myself. I don't justify myself. It's someone else that justifies me, Brother Larry. It's someone else. Justification declares that the demand for justice has been satisfied and that there is no ground for condemnation. In verse number one of chapter eight that I read, there is now, therefore, now no condemnation. I've heard a lot of people quote that scripture, but I'm going to tell you something. They don't quote it all because they don't like it all. I'm going to go back over here. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. They'll stop right there. Well, I'm in Christ Jesus, but it says to them who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. When I was growing up, and I look around a lot of young people in this church, like, this young baby right here, I think, oh, my mind. And I know y'all can't believe that I used to be like that little baby. I can't believe it either. either. My wife had to slip around and get that picture from my mom when y'all wanted to hang all the pictures out here. Had me, I had the curliest hair when I was growing up. Y'all wouldn't believe that, would you? When I was a senior in high school, I had one of the biggest afros in Dublin. And I didn't have to go to the hairdresser to get it. All I had to do was wash my hair and fluff her up, and there she was. I made the photographer that made our senior pictures so mad 
came and put that cap on my head, got it seated down on there real good, turned around, walked to the camera, and, I, and he told me, he said, young man, don't move a muscle. And I didn't, I just sat there. As he turned around and walked back to the camera, my hair took to push that cap up. He went on the floor. He turned around and looked at me. Well, I told him, he got the cap up, and he put it back on my head. He turned around. My hair didn't like wearing hands. That's why when I went in the ring corps, they had to shave my head before I could wear a hand. He turned around and he said, son, I'm going to take care of you. He walked out of the room a few minutes later. He came back with a handful of bobby pins. He found a girl that had a bunch of bobby pins. I put a bobby pin in that hand for my head. I'm glad that's not the one that hung up back there. Because y'all sure wouldn't have known me. <laughs> but that was back when I wanted to do the things that I wanted to do. Jesus told me, he said, Larry, you're going to have to deny yourself if you're going to follow me. My sergeant proved it to me one time. He noticed that when we get off duty that we'd go to the mess hall and went. Now, the mess hall, you had two lines. You went one line where you got good food. Or if you went to the one direction, you got good food. If you went the other direction, you got junk food. Well, a lot of us, when we go in the chow hall, we went the direction where we got junk food. Hamburgers, french fries, pizza, potato chips. And the other line was fruit, salad, and good stuff. Well, he's going to prove to us one day which line we need to be in. He said, okay, we're going on a 30-mile hike tomorrow. Full pack, full gear, everything. He said, before we leave, said, you will be inspected to make sure you have every piece of gear. If you don't, we're not leaving until you get it. What I mean by that is our backpack weighed 150, well, not 150, about 110 pounds. We had our rifle, and we had a full ammo box of ammo to go with us because we had to carry our own ammo. We didn't have trucks following us. We got out about five miles. Those of us that had been eating the hamburgers, the hot dogs, french fries. Sergeant, give me, give me. Can we rest just a minute? Nope, we gotta keep on going. We're not gonna take a rest till we hit 15 miles. Then, Sarge, I'm gonna die. I'm gonna make it somebody take part of my load. Jesus said, Larry, listen. There's a lot of people out there that's following me. And he said, a lot of them are just like you. They have not denied themselves. And they're going to need help. What are you going to do? After we got off that, 50, of that 30 mile hike, you call it a 30 mile hike, after the 30 miles of nothing but pure pain. We got off of it and we went back to the chow hall. Instead of going down the hamburger line, I went over there and the guy says, What do you want to eat? I said, I want the biggest bowl you've got. He said, What for? I said, I'm going to eat a salad like nobody's ever ate before. For me, Jesus is saying, Larry, I want you to watch what you get involved in because you can't follow me when you're trying to follow the world. I like what Brother Roger puts in our bulletin every Sunday. A Christian is someone who has let go of the world with both hands to hold on to Christ. I like to tell you, I know people this morning that this is what they've done. I, and I hate to say this, and don't, don't get me wrong, you're the world. You're Christ. But this is what people are trying to do. They're trying to hold on hands with the world and with Christ. Christ said, you cannot do that. Either you're going to love the one and hate the other, or you're going to be drawn to the one and drawn away from the other and said, you cannot hold hands. 
with the world and with Christ. Because Christ does not go the way of the world and the world does not go the way of Christ. I don't care how loud you shout hallelujah. I don't care how high you hold your hands up. If you are not following and denying this morning, you are not following Christ. Justification is something that I'm going to leave up to my Lord. Because, Brother Barry, I cannot justify myself. When I justify myself, I destroy other people. Just like this man that told me I've went for years. You read over in the book of Luke. You find two men that went to the temple to pray. One went in there and said, Lord, I want to thank you. But I'm not like other people. You read the scripture. It's there in Luke chapter, chapter 18, verses 9 through 14. One of them stood there and boasted about what he'd done. He said, I fast, fast during the week. I pay tithe of all I possess. And said, I'm not an extortioner, I'm not a liar, I don't bear false witness. And I'm not like this other guy over here pointing to that publican. The publican didn't even lift up his eyes, and he smote on his chest and said, Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner. Jesus said he went home justified because of his actions, because of his word, more than the other man. Now, the other man had never done anything wrong. He was trying to justify himself by the works of the law. The law will not justify anybody. You read the scripture. You'll find out that the only thing that the law can do is condemn and sentence to death. The nature of the law is to prove to man that he is sinful and deserves God's punishment. The purpose of the law is to lead man to renounce his own righteousness and trust in the imputation of Christ's righteousness as the only ground for acceptance with God. I'm not justified because of my sin. I'm justified not by my actions, but I'm justified by the actions of Jesus Christ. Him alone. You know what? There may be things that I do in this life that people say, boy, you're a good man. But Brother Larry, that's not going to mean nothing. When I stand before Christ. I've heard men preach on the scripture when Christ stood before Pilate. Pilate looked out at the crowd and said, What will you that I should do unto him that is called Christ? I've heard people say, Brother Larry, what do I need to do? I've told people that all you need to do is to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. As the Bible states, I've seen men walk away. I stood in the dining room of a man one day. He had grabbed a hold of his table and it was shaking so hard he literally shook the centerpiece that his wife had put on the table. He literally shook it off the table and it landed on the floor and broke because he was not willing to take justification by Christ Jesus. He was trying to justify himself. He was trembling so hard even when we left, you could feel the floor in his house. It was an old house. You could feel the floor shake where he was shaking. Because he wasn't willing to let go of his own justification. He was not willing to let go of himself and to grab a hold of Christ. We walked out of that house. And I looked at him and I said, sir, I hope one day you wake up to the truth. That you cannot justify yourself before God. Thank God, about six months after that, he sent word. He sent word. He said, Brother Larry, I've finally done what you said. Otherwise, 
him on the nose, but I could hear him shouting. He said the feeling that I received. He said the feeling of not having any burden whatsoever. I said because you took your burden and you put it over on Christ. And he said, let me. He said, oh, to God, I would have done this months ago. Oh, to God, I would have gave this months ago. And he said, I want to tell you, I have it today. Brother Larry, I was so thrilled. I was so happy. But I want to tell you something. That was six months in that man's life. He later told me we went by and visited he told me, he said, I want to tell you, he said, I literally had hell in my life. Literally. He said, the torture that I had. He said, but that moment, I believe. He said, man, he said, the clouds rolled away. The sun shone in. The clouds moved out of the way. And that light that you told me about was able to come I understand what you meant by being justified by Christ Jesus. And I said, stand on that promise. Because that's the only thing that's going to get us through this life. Justification. Thank God Jesus provided. Jesus gives it. I don't have to justify myself. I don't have to justify myself to anybody. All I do is look up and say, Jesus, I had a man told me one time I was never going to see him. Because I didn't do it the way he did. Well, you know what? I may not have done it the same way Brother Gerald did. I don't know. Brother Gerald, was you saved in a church? Was I saved in a church? Was you saved in a church? Yes. You was, okay. Right then and there, I ain't got what Gerald's got because I was saved in my grandma's house. <laughs> Oh me, oh me. No, I got the very same thing he got, even though he was in church. I got the very same thing because Jesus said, Work two or three are gathered together in my name at church. No, he didn't say at church. He said, We're gathered together in my name. I'll be in the middle. I'll be in there very many. Because my mother, my grandpa, and my uncle decided. They were going to have a Bible study at the dining room table that night, and they got in the spirit so loud that me, my cousin, and my uncle got saved that night. My uncle had to get up and go to work. He worked second shift and done until he got up and walked out of the house and shouted. He said that was the best day he ever had to go to work. He hated to go to work, but Jesus justified all three of us. I got the same thing for the children. I got the same thing Brother Barry got. I got the same thing Brother John got. I don't ask you, friend. You got the same thing we got. I'm talking about what the Bible says. I want to ask you, I want Brother Barry to come to the song this morning. I want the ladies to come to the instruments. I want us to stand this morning. And I want to give you an opportunity. <clears throat> Whatever you need this morning, you can find it in this office right here. Trust me. And I know that we have people here that will come and pray with you and for you. We've seen that in the past. We know that it will happen today. Our brother, I was looking for you a while ago, and I just all I had to do was look up. I kept looking, but I could I forgot that he was up. Our brother, I was looking for you. But I knew you were here. 